Paul Haggis is here. He is the writer and director of the movie Crash. It is nominated for six Oscars in the following categories, directing, best picture, writing, supporting actor, film editing, and original song. Here is the trailer for the Oscar for writing in the best adapted screenplay category for last year's Oscar-winning picture, Million Dollar Baby. I am pleased to have him here on this program. Thanks well, for having me. Um, this, w this was inspired this movie mm -hmm. by a real life experience. Uh, Yours, sort of. A few. I mean, uh, there was a carjacking early right. on, or 1990, 1991. Right. Uh, two guys came up with guns, took my car. And I, I uh, became curious about who those, those kids were. Right. What their politics were, what their worldview were. Were they, were they you know, what their friends? their worldview was. Yeah, yeah. I, honest to God. And, and, <laughs> Is this a political act? <laughs> no, exactly. I didn't know. If they, how what long were you protesting when you put that gun <laughs> exactly, in my face? Exactly. And so I never intended to write about this. It was just the guys would creep into into my thoughts every year until ten years later. I finally decided to write about them. You never saw the car again. No, no, it was gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, then there were other things that happened. Uh, it, no, go ahead. What else uh, contributed? Uh, well, uh, something I saw in a studio a lot became Terrence Howard's story about a way a black director was treated. Yeah. And uh, and then I got a piece of hate mail uh, that turned into Matt Dillon's story. Uh, so that was interesting. It was from a, a character like Matt Dillon. No, no, nothing like that. It was uh, well, but the character became who Matt Dillon was. Yeah. It was uh, someone who wrote to say, oh, "Why is it that it's always the the black people who are the the the, 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 the innocent victims and the white people who are the oppressors or whatever their gripe was that week?" And they said, "And let me tell you a story about my dad." And this person in the story told me the story that Matt Dillon tells Shaniqua in the movie. Yeah. And I thought, how fascinating. You have uh, someone who, we think that racism is passed from one generation to the next, and intolerance. And mm. here's a man who was a good man, who did everything he could to teach his son the right lessons. But because of what happened to him, his son took the opposite lessons away. So, mm. so it's, it's much more complex. But you know what's think. interesting to me? It is a picture of, of the way a director mm. or a writer thinks. Yeah. I mean, you, you pull out everything that's happened. I hear somebody writes a letter, mm -hmm. and that story yeah. becomes later yeah. out of the mouth of Matt Dillon. Yeah. An interesting aspect of what ma motivates character in your film. Yeah, no, it's you just you grab from everywhere. I mean, from experiences living in Los Angeles, thirty years, things just sort of soak yeah. in. You never know what's going to find its way into into a screenplay. Now, this film could have shot anywhere in any any country. I mean, any city, major city in the world, or is it unique because of the racist aspect and the notion of of cars as an essential part of the culture? Well, I didn't really think it was a movie about race that I was doing. It became that. But it was about, it was about a fear a and intolerance. Yeah. I think you know. I think that how and and and, and how you know f uh, you know fear of others becomes you know others becomes easily easily become strangers, which become yeah. you know people who look different than you do. Uh, Los Angeles, because I wanted to write about us. I wanted to write about me, about my problems, my fears, my insecurities, uh, things that bother things that bother good people. I mean, Hollywood too often attacks race or, or, or these uh, kinds of movies in, in, in very easy manners. You know, there's the good white people who go down to help the poor black people in the South who are being, you know, being tortured by the, the awful, evil white people. And it's, life isn't like that. I mean, I'm sure that was at the time, but race isn't like that anymore. And so I wanted to talk about the fears that lie in our hearts, the hearts of good people. From the time you decided you wanted to do this to the day you began shooting was how long? Wow, well, five years. You did other things in between. Uh, well, yeah, I was unemployed. <laughs> but no, I wrote this on spec. Uh, I, actually, I came up with this, I didn't write it myself, I wrote it with Bobby, but I, I came up with the idea in the middle of the night, woke up, wrote, wrote the idea down, and then had the whole story, story laid out. And then In the middle of the night, you got up to wrote the whole thing down? Yeah, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I started thinking of these kids again. And I woke up and I went, damn, why am I thinking of these kids? And so I got up and I wrote down the story and then asked myself, you know, who did they bump into? Right. And then just kept following the characters. And then I went off and I, and I optioned uh, the script for Million Dollar Baby and wrote that. And when it was done, I was still unemployed. And so uh, I, I called up my friend Bobby and said, uh, I've got this story, I, I think it's a movie. And no one's ever gonna pay us to write it. And once it's done, no one's ever gonna make it. And he said, great, let's yeah, do that's it. A good one. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's ride so, that horse. <laughs> yeah, so Bobby Moresco and I wrote it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and was it a hard sell after that? Hey, yeah, it was ridiculous. Mark Harris, my friend, took it around place to place. He just all over town. He just shopped it. Yeah. Uh, he and Larry Bexy, and, and I just and we got we got no's at, at at every single. And what was studio. the breakthrough? And Bob Yari and Kathy Shulman. But first of all, Bob uh, read the script and just uh, he, he he loved it, and uh, and he was the only person to love it. And uh, then a couple of the actually that's true. A couple of other independent producers had liked the script, but said. You can't direct, and I said, "Well, I, I think I can." I yeah. said, "No, trust me, you can't." <laughs> you can't. We know better. <laughs> so, and Bob yeah. said, uh, "Yeah, you can do it." And so we just had to waive everything. You knew you nothing. could. Though. 
Yeah, so from television, you know, you'd, yeah. you'd, you'd learn enough to... I mean, that's, that's so, not quite but true. That's interesting. What did you need? Because you've done directing in television. Yeah, I directed. I hired myself as a you know as a producer. I'd hire myself as a director because no one else would hire me. So, <laughs> but you know, but also I, I like being scared. If I'm not, I mean, that's why I left television. I, I wasn't scared anymore. I, I wasn't challenging myself, and so I sort of just quit and decided to do independent films. And and this one scared me. I mean, dealing with all these actors, uh, I thought they could eat me alive. And so I was I was uh, I was scared enough to be happy when, when making it. And then when you finished, were you what? Terrified. Terrified. <laughs> terrified. terrified that it was, oh, terrified that, did, that whether you had it in the can or terrified no. of something else? Well, both. I mean, I think I'm, I'm constantly in a state of fear. But the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> only to be happy. But, you know, I, that, that I didn't have it in the can, certainly, or that it was never in the script, and that, and that once it was out there, people would look at it and go, and, and I'd be the poster boy for the KKK, because they'd take it literally. And yeah. uh, so, and then also that it wasn't a film. I didn't know if it was a film, because... What well, makes a film? Well, I don't know, but this one, I mean, a lot of people have done these, these kinds of stories before Robert Altman, I stole right, from right, liberally. Right, right. Uh, but this one, as we, right. since we didn't structure it like you're supposed to structure a movie. No, no, not act no one, central act two. narrative. I have no, yeah, I have no idea what Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 are, and some of the, the biggest events take place in the middle of Act 2 rather than at the end of Act 3. <laughs> and the story just wouldn't change, so I, I, I didn't know. So when I cut it together, I said, well, I'm still not sure if it's a movie. And I said, well, if people pay $10, I guess it's a film, yeah. you know. So, but did somebody come in and look at it and say, well, look, you need to change this. You, no, they you need to pick me, it up in the middle and you need that's, to cut it off no, at the no, end. No, my, my producers were incredibly supportive. Uh, Bob and everybody was incredibly supportive yeah. and I just uh, just did it the way I wanted to do it. Now, did you find directing these actors difficult to do or did once you got into the swing of the thing, it was okay? You know, uh, they were very good to me. You had very good actors. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I had wonderful actors and, and they, were, they were lovely to me. I mean, the fact that I had Don uh, and, and so Don as a producer, he, it, people relied on him because they didn't know who the hell I was. But yeah. they said, well, if, if Don trusts Paul, then, then we will too. And, and uh, so I, I had their trust from the beginning, even though I hadn't earned it. And so I just did nothing to lose it. Thank you God. said an interesting, you've got Terrence Howard and Don Cheadle in this, right? Yes. So you say, you know, one of the th interesting things, if you, Cheadle is a guy that people want to work with. Yeah. He's there's an actor something magnet. about him. Yeah, no, he's, he's an actor magnet. Yeah, there's a him, Sean Penn. There's a, there's a yeah. few of them out there. That you look at the Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. You know, that you put them in a movie and, go, and other actors go, oh, oh, I want to be in scenes with that thing. person. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a, and that's a fascinating concept because it's like, or sometimes people want to. It's like Woody Allen's ability to get people to work with him because yes. they simply want to be in a Woody Allen movie. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and that's and we were smart enough to know that right off the bat. That's why we went for Don first yeah. and asked him to be a producer as well. So if someone comes along and says, "What's this movie about?" What do you say? I give up. I don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I guess fear and intolerance. I mean, and it's, uh, yeah, right. well, I, I think it's about about the contradictions that we all embody. I mean, I think too long Hollywood has made films, at least for me, in which the 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 the, the characters are both are, are good and then evil, and the good guys are flawed but sort of nicely flawed, and and, and the bad guys have a couple of good points but not really good. I don't think that's reality. I think that we are the villains and the heroes in our own lives. I mean, there right. are people who do terrible villainous things. I'm not trying to say that's not. Right. But to really understand who they are, you have to look at them as full human beings. And that's what I was trying to do on this. Roll tape. Here's a scene from Crash. Was your what? <laughs> that's Chris Bridges. That's <laughs> ludicrous. And uh, uh, and, and, with, and Lorenz Tate. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so those are, those are the two kids that Jack Mike my car. Those are the two kids? Well, not the, not the yeah, They right. were portraying the two kids right. that Jack Mike okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, when you went about doing this, mm -hmm. uh, were you casting against type? I mean... Very much so. I mean, it was... Well, not entirely. I mean, we, you'd... A leading man becomes a racist. Yeah, I mean, you have, uh, in a case with, with Don Cheadle, when he came on, yeah. he said uh, he wanted to do the film. I said, great. What part? He said, I don't care. And so he actually went back and forth for six months between the role of the television director and the cop. And I thought, you know, you're a brilliant actor. Choose a role. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> and, and he finally chose, actually, the television director, at which point we offered the other part to, to another actor, and, and that actor said, well, I'd like to play the television director. And Don said, great, I'll play the cop. <laughs> so, and, so that's, uh, it's, uh, and then that actor fell out, unfortunately, and, 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 and luckily we were able to find Terrence Howard. Yeah. Terrence Howard is about to have an amazing career, isn't he? He's great. He's, he's really you know, he's nominated now. Yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah. And he's got this cheek hustle and flow and, and crash out this year, and, and uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful actor. What does he bring? You know, I, I see, we were talking earlier about what the, the, uh, the qualities that Sean Penn has, he, and, and he has a lot of those same qualities. He just sort of opens himself up completely, and, and just and just lets you can right see. inside, right. and and uh, he'll he'll open up his crack in that soul, and just and say, "This is me," and you go, "Oh my God, that's him!" Yeah. And he does and, that and as when the he character. opens it up, your intro, what, what you yes. see is interesting. You just keep have to you have to keep going in. Yeah. yeah. Take a look at another scene. I want to get to some of this. Give a sense of the flavor of this film. Mm. Uh, here's another scene. Yeah. 
It's Bobby and I. Yeah, it's, uh, it's and, and you write, well, you remember, you know, I'm typing away, and I, I remember writing a scene, and Bobby said, hey, we're here watching, and we're talking back and forth, and I got to that stuff, and I was going, can we say these things? I mean, can these characters say these things? They're so awful. And, and Bobby would say, you know, it's true. We yeah. can say it. It doesn't matter if it's an awful truth. It's, if it's true. From it's that true, we can say it. And that's the, that's the way we held to. And, and so these, these, all these horrible truths came out, as well as some, you know, some funny truths. But how do you work as a team? Yeah, Bobby and I had worked together since uh, a television show I did called Easy Streets in 1996, back and forth. We'd work separately and, and we'd write separately and then, then together. And um, we already had the story sort of laid out, we knew where it was going. And so uh, oftentimes we'd just sit and, and, and I'd write and he'd, he'd uh, sort of look at it and rewrite or he'd just go away. I said, go and he'd write another scene while I was doing this and we'd put it back together. And he's, he's a wonderful collaborator, Bobby is. If someone said to you, came to you, a young film student at Southern mm -hmm. Cal. Yeah. I want to be a director. Mm. Tell me what course I take. Wow. Um, I, I don't know because I came. In I, I was lucky enough to become a director through being Television, a writer. Writing, yeah. You know, writing, and then finally uh, producing, and then just having the power to hire myself. And the networks would say, "Well, do you know what you're doing?" I said, "Oh yeah." And I had no idea. Mm. Um, I guess the right the the, the, the I, I give this have this. Would you live by fear too? Yes. Yes, but fear I'd, of failure and fear of embarrassing I'd embrace myself. That. I'm and, going, I go for that. Yeah. But, but I guess what I'd say to them is the same thing I'd say to young writers: is that don't write or don't attach yourself with your director. Don't develop a project you think is safe, something you think the studios are looking for. Yeah, right. uh, that's the worst thing you can do. You know, do something that's in your gut. Do something that no one else is ever going to. And how do you make find do what's it. in your gut? You know, you have to ask yourself questions because I think that's what good movies are. They, they, they're things that ask they questions. Ask questions yeah. you know? And so you have to ask yourself some really hard questions. I mean, I uh, had asked the question, a question. I, I'd followed my characters until they got home. You know, they, they, they jacked the cars. They, they, I got home and I asked myself what I did at two o'clock in the morning. Well, they changed the locks. So I had a locksmith come in. And then I said, well, hold on, Mr. Big Liberal. How would you have felt if that kid who came to change the locks at 2 o'clock in the morning, what if he, you know, was Hispanic? What if he had, you know, short hair, baggy pants, what looked in your ignorance to be gang tattoos? How would you have felt then? Would you have felt safe in your gut? And what you said, and I went, oh, damn, I don't think I would have. And I hated that so much, I knew I had to write it. And when, when what was the reaction? that You knew the conversation was going to take place mm. after the couple Mm. had been, and the wife had been assaulted mm -hmm. by Matt yes. Dillon's character. Yeah. You knew the conversation would take place inevitably between the two of them sure. and what she was going to say. Yeah. How could you let that happen? Why yes. did you stand there? Yeah. And, and the moral dilemma that he faced. He saved is her that life. He, yeah. did, he was playing with her life. Exactly. He, was, know, he, he, did, had... he did the expedient thing. Yeah, and I mean, also what he thought was a bad, no a bad connotation, he did, he, but he, he did, did the, the thing that he thought was the pragmatic thing to do at the moment, and he didn't do the Thing from, to show his anger and yeah, from his stand perspective, on his principle and, 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 and I think say, I'll the, die for it right now. Yeah, that's right. And that's the wonderful thing, I think, about writing is you, 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 you get to put yourself in the character, in, in, in the, the souls and in, in the feet of these the characters who, who you know, completely disagree and are both right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if you understand those characters in the, in the given circumstances of life and don't, don't judge them, you know, and just, be, just let yourself see it through their eyes. Suddenly you can write this side and it's right and this part of the argument's right. And there's, and, and uh, that scene really divides men and women. They go out and they argue well, I, about I, that I big time. Does, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's yeah. big fights in the, uh, in the theater lobbies. All women understand her and all men. Completely. And how could you not? And he goes, well, they're going to shoot us, sweetie. I mean, what's my job? My job is to keep you safe. It's not yeah. to get you and shot. she's saying, but it was my body and you stood there. And it was, it's your job to be a man. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so it's, it's pretty universal stuff. The reason I thought I loved you was because I thought you'd stand up for me. Exactly. Yeah. So you walk outside of here and there's a, there's a road sign that says director and there's a road sign that says writer. Which mm. way are you going? Director, because it's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Writing is hard. <laughs> I was just doing notes for my wife. Deborah just gave me notes on this one I just finished with Iraq. And I, I go, oh, God, I've got to rewrite it now. It's, writing is tough. Yeah, it's bleeding. Oh, yeah. 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 And so what's the one about Iraq? Uh, it's uh, based on a short story. Uh, it's not a short story. It's based by an, on a magazine article by Mark Bull, a wonderful writer, uh, called Death and Dishonor. And it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, men who've, re who've returned uh, from Iraq. And it's about a, a father who goes searching for his son who's gone AWOL, apparently gone AWOL. And it's this tragic story of what's truly happened to him and what's happening to our men and women, our brave men and women, by sending them to a place mm. they can't possibly win. Congratulations on Crash. Oh, thank you so much.